bring in Congressman Jamie Raskin, a member of the House Committee. Congressman Raskin, thanks you for joining us. You just heard Senator Rounds right there. He said that this idea of using the 14th Amendment, passing a law to enforce the 14th Amendment, is not something he can support. Why do you think it's a live possibility? Well, first of all, I was delighted to hear the senator repeat what a lot of the Republicans were saying during the Senate impeachment trial, which is that he could be prosecuted afterwards. Some of them are changing their tune on that. But I think uh, it's good to hear him say that justice should be able to work through the DOJ and the, pres the former president should be prosecuted for any crimes he committed. Um, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment says that anybody who has sworn an oath to uphold the Constitution, who violates and betrays that oath by participating in an insurrection and rebellion against the Union, shall never be allowed to hold public office again. That was adopted by the Republicans, the radical Republicans, after the Civil War during the Reconstruction period. It was used then, and uh, it may indeed, depending on uh, what we find Donald Trump did, be uh, a blockade for him ever being able to run for office again. Based on what you found so far, do you have evidence that President Trump was complicit, that he actually participated in the insurrection? Well, we already have the fact that he was impeached by the House of Representatives for inciting uh, a violent insurrection against the union and a 57 to 43 definitive legislative pronouncement by the Senate that he incited a violent insurrection. Uh, the question is to what extent he was complicit in organizing it, and that's exactly what the Select Committee is looking at as we are uh, fulfilling our charge under House Resolution 503 to determine all of the facts uh, composing the events and the causes of the events on January 6th. And we will be conducting further hearings about that and we'll be releasing a report. So we hope to have a comprehensive and fine-grained portrait of everything that happened, including the central role of the president. The president's former press secretary, former President Trump's former press secretary, Stephanie Grisham, went before your committee this week. You said she opened up lines of inquiry that hadn't occurred to you. Like what? Well, uh, she had uh, a number of names that I had not heard before, and she had some ways of looking at it. Look, there are, you know, the amazing thing about what's taking place, George, is that the overwhelming majority of people, uh, both within the Trump administration and outside, are stepping forward to give the evidence that they've got. And of course, that's their legal duty when Congress comes calling, but it's also uh, a kind of civic duty and honor to do that. And uh, overwhelmingly, people have participated. It's only a problem. The closer you get to Donald Trump and you have a handful of people who think they're above the law, like Roger Stone and Steve Bannon and uh, Mark Meadows, uh, once he was intimidated by Donald Trump. But in general, we're getting terrific participation and we're really connecting all of the dots. There is a lot of concern about the next election. What are the reforms? What other reforms is the committee considering? Well, that will be the final part of our work when we look at uh, this violent uh, attack on the peaceful transfer of power coordinated with an attempt at a political coup by an outgoing president. So there's going to be a whole panoply of reforms that we need to investigate, discuss, and then put on the table for Congress and for the American people to look at. Uh, some of them are at the very ground level about strengthening security uh, at the U.S. Capitol, preventing uh, violent physical invasions through our windows and doors, but a lot of them go all the way up to um, as long as we're going to have the Electoral College, which is an antiquated and increasingly obsolescent institution, uh, fortifying the role of the people to make sure that the will of the people in the states is not stolen away by inside trickery and games. And that's what we saw last time. We need to defend the people's right to vote and the people's sovereignty over our leadership against attempts to use voter suppression and uh, gerrymandering and uh, the manipulation of booby traps within the Electoral College to deny people their will in uh, defining who's going to be our president. Are you confident you can complete your work before the midterms? And how concerned are you that if the Republicans do take control of the Congress next time around, they'll undo everything you've done in the committee? Well, look, I think that the, the true obligation of a political party in a constitutional democracy is to accept that there are rules of the game. And we play by those rules if, even if we don't like them. I mean, I'm an, an opponent of the Electoral College. I believe in a national popular vote for president. But as long as we have the Electoral College, we've got to respect the rules under it. But what's uh, 
evolved on the other side, as President Biden put it this week, is a rule or ruin philosophy, which is uh, the GOP is going to rule or they're going to ruin the prospects for political democracy to make progress in any other way. And that's a fundamentally authoritarian approach. The GOP under Donald Trump's thumb is now positioning itself outside of the constitutional order. They attack our constitutional processes and they attack the outcome of our elections, even against all of the evidence. We had 61 federal and state courts reject all of their claims of electoral corruption and fraud, including eight judges who Donald Trump appointed to the bench himself, and still they're out there propounding lies. That is a totalitarian tactic, and we have to call it for what it is and say that's not going to work in American democracy in the 21st century. We have to defend our democratic institutions against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and against all those authoritarian governments abroad that are trying to destabilize American democratic culture. Congressman Raskin, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks for having me, George. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.